for choosing freeconferencecall.com. You're helping people around the world. If you are the host, press star, please enter your pin to follow. Thank you. There are three participants in the conference. Please announce yourself. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, friends. We are so happy that you are here with us, whether it be online or whether it be over the phone. We are thrilled that you have decided to join us for worship this evening. We do have a couple of announcements uh, this evening. Uh, the first is, is that the Education Committee will meet tomorrow uh, at 11.30, so uh, we will invite you, uh, if you are on the Education Committee, to join us uh, for that meeting. Uh, the second is uh, our new book for uh, the book study is in. We will be doing a book by Rachel Billups called uh, Be Bold, and that uh, book study will start October 14th, which is a Wednesday, and that will be at 2 p.m. Uh, I had announced that uh, I was excited uh, that Rachel will actually be joining us for one of the sessions for a little bit. Uh, and so uh, if you would like to, you can contact the office uh, or myself, and uh, we will find a way to be able to uh, get uh, that uh, book uh, to you. And so, um, again, uh, this is a great book, uh, and I'm excited to be able to do uh, this book uh, with you. Because of the amount of uh, PT and OT that I have to do as I'm still continuing to recover from this concussion, I want to make sure that everyone is uh, double-checking uh, the bulletin. My hours change uh, each week. Uh, I am generally in the office uh, Tuesday and Thursday morning and Wednesday and Friday afternoons uh, at some point. Uh, sometimes it is the evenings because I have PT or OT or both in the same day. And so as I'm continuing to try to recover from this, just uh, so I can be as transparent as uh, I can with you, um, my hours are not the same each week. Uh, part of it's with uh, Beth's work schedule and part of it is with PT and OT. And so uh, I don't want you to feel like I am unavailable because I very much am. 
Uh, I am in the church office, I do promise. Uh, just make sure you check the bulletin each week as Sharon and I make sure that each week we connect uh, to make sure that we have the most up-to-date hours each week uh, that I am available uh, inside of the office. Um, you can always reach me uh, by the phone number that is in the bulletin uh, and also uh, via email uh, as well. Uh, we also have the food pantry that will be uh, Tuesday night uh, from 5 to 6 o'clock. Um, if you know anyone who needs any food, please send them our way. I think that's all of the announcements. Can you think of anything else, Pastor Barbara? Um, Ms. Teresa is not going to be doing the planting of the flowers tomorrow. Yes, uh, there will be, uh, Ms. Teresa is not able to do the planting of the flowers uh, to tomorrow uh, due to uh, some unforeseen uh, circumstances. Uh, so uh, that will be rescheduled, uh, I'm sure, uh, shortly. Um, so we will let you know uh, when that is uh, for her Sunday school class. And I think uh, that is uh, all the announcements uh, at this time. So uh, we invite you to bow your heads and hearts with us for our opening prayer. God, the story of our ancestors Touch us as dark sayings of old. Help us behold truths in their stories. We are frightened to see in our own. Open our eyes to see your presence amidst their hopes and fears. Open our hearts to the courage it takes to assume leadership in our communities while remaining your faithful followers. Open our minds to perceive hope in the midst of despair. We believe, Great Spirit, help our unbelief. In Jesus' name. Amen. This time we will invite you to join us in our opening hymn, number 128, He Leadeth Me. i 
Please join with me in our call to worship. We come to worship and praise our God and to learn more about the wonders of our God. How great and wonderful is our compassionate God. We come with ears and hearts open to God, ready to discover more of God's mysterious and mysteries and miracles. How generous and caring is our unchanging God. We gather to share together in our common history and to experience the enrichment which that brings us. All praise and honor to God for past and present blessings and for God's merciful love and grace. Amen. in prayer. Love through us, living God, in the power of your Holy Spirit. Love through us, Holy One, by the grace of your child, Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith that we may respond with trust and hope. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Please join in our hymn of illumination number 193, Jesus, the name high over all, number 193, verses 1 through 3. This time we are going to get ready to enter our time of prayer here at the United Methodist Church at Milltown. Uh, today I had the pleasure of offering up a uh, blessing for Bob and Bernice uh, Howitt as they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. And so we want to make sure that uh, we say a happy anniversary uh, to them. Uh, 50 years is quite a milestone, uh, and so uh, many, many more happy years uh, to the two of you. Let's uh, continue to be thankful for all of those who are serving on the front lines of uh, the pandemic as we think of our hospital workers, uh, for those who are our firefighters, our policemen, uh, and police uh, women, uh, for those who are, are EMS individuals, uh, for those who are working in our uh, stores, 
Uh, let's be in prayer for those uh, individuals. We also uh, should be in uh, prayer f for um, Gabriella uh, as she recovers uh, from uh, COVID, for Joseph and Louis' family, uh, for Joanne as she awaits uh, test results. There's uh, other requests that were uh, sent in to me this week, those that wish to uh, remain um, private, and so uh, I will honor that, but let's uh, be a people in prayer for those who have what I like to call unspoken uh, prayer requests. Uh, many of you have asked uh, how my mom is doing. Uh, she still needs your prayer. Um, she is home. Um, she uh, still has uh, this infection that she's going to be battling for quite a while. Uh, so let's be in prayer for her. Uh, her name is uh, Christine. With that, let us bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God, as we come before you, we come before you as a thankful people. We're thankful for two people who are committed to each other, like Bob and Bernice. We're thankful for the many years of 50 that they have spent together married. We pray for them and continued blessing on them for the years to come. We're thankful for all of those who are on the front lines of this pandemic as this pandemic continues as we think of our hospital workers, our police officers, our firefighters, our EMS individuals, those out making deliveries, those working in stores. God, we're thankful for their sacrifice, their life of service. God, we think of those like Gabriella who are battling different health issues. For those who are grieving, like Joseph and Louis' family. Think of those who are waiting, like Joanne. God, we... Think of all of our students, our teachers, and our parents. As this school year has presented some challenges, we pray for wisdom and discernment. God, we pray for all of the requests that were sent in those that are still on our hearts this very evening. As we take time now to pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have two scripture lessons this evening that I will read for us. The first comes from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And this is what the scripture says. The whole Israelite community broke camp and set out from the Sin Desert to continue their journey as the Lord commanded. They set up their camp at Rediphium, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people argued with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why are you arguing with me? Why are you testing the Lord? But the people were very thirsty for water there. 
And they complained to Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with these people? They are getting ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of Israelites' elders with you. Take in your hand the shepherd's rod that you used to strike the Nile River and go. I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Hit the rock. Water will come out of it, and the people will be able to drink. Moses did so while the Israel's elders watched. He called the place Massa and Mireb, because the Israelites argued and tested the Lord, asking, Is the Lord really with us or not? Our second scripture comes from Matthew 21, verses 23 through 32, and this is what the scripture says. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. They asked, what kind of authority do you have for doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I have a question for you. If you tell me the answer, I'll tell you what kind of authority I have to do these things. Where did John get his authority to baptize? Did he get it from heaven or from humans? They argued amongst themselves. If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, then why don't, didn't you believe him? But we can't say from humans because we're afraid of the crowd since everyone thinks John was a prophet. Then they replied, we don't know. Jesus also said to them, neither will I tell you what kind of authority I have to do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. Now he came to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. No, I don't want to, he replied. But later he changed his mind and went. The father said the same thing to the other son who replied, Yes, sir, but he didn't go. Which one of these two did his father's will, they said? The first one. Jesus said to them, I assure you that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering God's kingdom ahead of you. For John came to you on the righteous road, and you didn't believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. Yet even after you saw this, you didn't change your hearts and lives, and you didn't believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So before I get ready to begin um, preaching, I wanted to let everybody know the uh, next sermon series that we're going to look at for the month of October is going to be a sermon series entitled The Sower. And what that sermon series is going to be is a sermon series entirely dedicated uh, looking at the power, parable of the sower. Jesus uses a parable here, uh, which is a story. Uh, to communicate his point. And so I'm going to take an in-depth look at one of the parables that many of us uh, learned when we were in Sunday school, myself included, about where seeds fall. And we're going to examine maybe what kind of soil we are when we hear the word uh, each uh, weekend. So uh, that's what we're going to look at uh, next month. And so we invite you to join us uh, for that I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for a word of prayer. God, as we prepare to hear this topic of tough choices, may we be a people of open minds and open hearts. People that admit that tough choices are a part of life, but that we do have guidance, that we do have wisdom to make these tough choices. May we be a people that stop and think before we speak and act. Be with the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth. Amen. So tonight I want to talk to you about tough choices. We've all been there. Well, they're no fun. They're the pit in your stomach, make you stay up at night. Tough choices. Whether it be because you have to make this tough choice or because you've already made this tough choice, they're just no fun. The passages we have today involve two people in particular, Moses and Jesus, making tough choices on how they're going to respond 
especially in the heat of the moment. So let me ask you, how do you respond in the heat of the moment? How do you handle people challenging you? How do you handle people grating on your skin over and over and over again? Sometimes we rise to the challenge, and other times, let's just say, not so much. We want to respond a certain way, but well, people will be people, and kids will be kids, and well, we just don't choose wisely. But I want to look at our first passage in particular in Exodus 17. And I love my translation in particular, the Common English Bible, because it talks about Moses asking a simple question. He looks at the Israelites and says, Why are you arguing with me? Moses is annoyed. If that wasn't enough, the Israelites will continue to push Moses' buttons. They're like a three-year-old. Moses has had it. And well... I can't blame him. At this point, it feels like if you're the Israelites, you're lost. Moses and Aaron, they're not pulling over for directions at the local gas station. There's not a whole lot of scenery because, well, you're in the desert. And it feels like this nightmare, well, it's not going to end. And newsflash, it won't end for quite a while. Not to mention, you're in the desert. Things are bad. And Moses, he feels like his life is on the line. In fact, he tells God, they're about to stone me. It can't get much worse. And so he offers up a plea to God. What do I do? God, help me. What do I do? And God informs him, hit the rock, which he does. More on that later. Things are so bad that Moses literally names this place, argue and test it. Isn't that a great name for a little place? Argue and testing. While everyone was questioning God, Moses at least has faith. He makes the tough choice to still believe. This is one of two stories that involves Moses, a rock, water, and Israelites in the Bible. This time Moses makes the right choice and follows through with what God asks Moses to do. The other time is Numbers chapter 20. And well, Moses chose, chooses poorly. He let the Israelites get to him. He lost faith. And it literally costs Moses everything. Everything that he had worked for, all the wandering in the desert, it cost him his ticket to the promised land. So when your kids are driving you up the wall, That coworker is asking for help for that 100th time on the exact same task that you've already explained for the 99th time, and it feels like you've been wandering in the desert for 40 years, or, I don't know, a pandemic for months on end that seemingly has absolutely no end anytime soon, how will you respond? What tough choice will you make? Will you be a person of faith, or you will be a person that gives up? Wrong decisions have consequences. Don't let people grate on you. This is where we get to our second passage. Matthew 21, verses 23 through 32. Jesus has his authority challenged. How do you feel when Jesus or when you have your authority challenged? I don't know many people that like to have their authority challenged, in particular when it's at work or as a parent of a three-nager. That's right, I said it, a three-nager. A three-year-old that acts like a teenager. Nobody likes having their authority questioned. You just ask somebody to do it, it would be so nice if they just did it. It's not hard. The answer that Jesus gives to a question is twofold. He first asks a question and then gives a story or a parable. When Jesus asks this question, he makes the religious experts, the church people, 
give an answer back of, well, we don't know. They don't have a good answer. And well, Jesus is really good at that. Giving people really hard questions to answer. I'm sure Jesus took time to think about what question he was going to ask. What story Jesus was going to tell. The story or parable that Jesus tells reminds these religious leaders and church people that grace is there for, well, everyone, even those that they don't like or those that they deemed, well, unworthy. These answers struck the religious leaders to their core, their very core. Jesus gave those who were challenging him answers. And answers that, well, they didn't like. However, when Jesus was challenged, he didn't go on a tirade about this and that and break them down. Jesus calmly responded with a question and a story. So friends, how do we respond when we're challenged? Do we take a moment, stop, and think before we respond Think back in your life. In situations that you found yourself now in difficulties, how much different would it have been had you have just taken a moment to stop and think before you responded or acted? I know at least for me, a couple of outcomes would have been just a little bit different had I have made the tough choice to just stop and think. But that's what makes that decision so tough. Our Philippians 2 passage that we have as a part of the lectionary along with these other ones are about four things. Being united, humble, not selfish, and thinking of others better than self. Carrying the attitude of Christ with us wherever we go, especially in interactions with others. Friends, I don't know about you, but when I'm on social media, where I'm in interactions with other people, I don't see a whole lot of that, and it saddens me greatly. In particular, in one area with politics, whether you are Republican, Independent, Democrat, what we neglect to forget is that we are made in the image of God. And that we are all valued and loved. And that we need to treat each other that way. And sometimes we have to make the tough choice of thinking before we choose to, well, respond. And sometimes the best response is, well, just keep scrolling, my friends. I want to close with a story that Winston Churchill Uh, about a tough choice that he had to make during World War II. During World War II, Winston Churchill had to make this painful choice. The British Secret Service had broken the Nazi code and informed Churchill that the Germans were going to bomb Coventry. He had two choices. The first was to evacuate the citizens and save hundreds of lives at the expense of indicating to the Germans that the code was indeed broken. Or, number two, take no action, which would kill hundreds, but keep the information flowing and possibly save many, 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 many more lives. Well, Churchill made this difficult choice that he would choose the second option. Friends, in life, not every decision that is tough will be life and death, like this decision that Churchill had to make. And thankfully, that's uh, the case, that we don't have to choose life and death with every decision. However, tough choices that we make on a daily basis shape who we are and the example that we set, and most importantly, who we represent, that we are images of Christ. May we be a people that can go and stop and think before we respond or react and make the right tough choice to be the example for others that they can follow. Amen.
This time, I'll invite you to join us for our closing hymn, the first two verses of 682, All Praise to Thee. Friends, I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for our closing prayer. Grant, O Lord, that what has been said with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and that what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go to share encouragement in Christ, to offer consolation in love. Go to spread the gifts of the Spirit. Go to make God's joy complete. Do these things, and you will truly live. Amen.